Hello, I'm delighted to be here today to talk about the climate crisis and what schools can do to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. And I've invited John Howson, who's the chair of Oxfordshire County Council and is a leading expert on teacher recruitment, but he'd written an amazing article on uh, carbon dioxide reduction in schools, which I saw this weekend. So welcome, John. Hello, Rebecca. It's lovely to be with you. I do think with the climate conference coming up, this is the time for schools to look at what they can do to help our planet. Uh, and it's for heads, uh, governing bodies, chairs of governors, uh, and indeed senior and other pupils to think about. Uh, and I know they're all extremely busy, so I'm gonna put up your eight key points now on the screen and let's just run through them very quickly. Number one was electric vehicle charge points in school. This is something that a school could fundraise for. It's going to be an asset for the future. Teachers are much more likely to buy electric cars if there's just one point. So it seems a wise focus of fundraising. But in the long term, we could have multiple charging points on school yards and it being used as a hub for community charging overnight, couldn't we, John? Oh, absolutely. And don't forget, it's also the delivery vehicles to school. If we've got charging points, then we can encourage people to deliver to schools using electric vehicles, uh, as well as the teachers um, uh, who are actually there. But as you say, uh, a school car park can be a big battery for the future. Yeah, we'll so come on one, to other examples of that later. One electric charge point per school is such a good target starting point. Now, some of the things on this list are quite long term. So schools should be appointing a champion for the climate crisis who is writing letters, harassing councils, um, communicating with other schools. Absolutely. I mean, we know that lots of students went on strike two years ago. Going on strike produces nothing other than lost education time. Actually being a champion with a list of these things to work through produces results. And that's what we want is results and action. So um, if you've got no one at all, I mean, you might be able to find a parent volunteer who'd be up just for doing this, doesn't want to be a governor, but could link into the school just to do this for the school. But if you've got no one, perhaps you could link with another school who's got one and just endorse what they're doing, because it's going to need wider action to support schools. So number two was solar panels on roofs. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the photovoltaics are on the roofs are a given if you've got a roof uh, in the right direction. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're a church school, uh, have a go at the diocese because dioceses are starting to put them on church roofs. They should also have a policy for putting them on school roofs. Solar panels in the playground. You were talking about concertina ones that can be locked away and then can come out when the children aren't using the playground in the middle of the day. Uh, absolutely. This is my great vision. I mean, school playgrounds are the least used piece of public space. They're used for the purpose which they're intended, uh, children's recreation and games, for probably about 2% of the year. The other 98% of the time, they're sitting there doing nothing. Let's turn them into solar farms where we need them, which can expand out where we don't need them for children and fold away when we do. Yeah, and this takes us on to point four as to how the school could be seen as being a real source, uh, an energy hub for the community of homes around it. It's a natural place to use that physical space wisely, maybe with concertina solar panels in the height of the day. And then in the future, maybe as a hub for electric vehicle charging at night when it's dark and all the children have gone home. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, many primary schools are the center of their community and making them a climate resource is one of the ways when if the birth rate is falling as it is now and funding comes under pressure it becomes a reasonable additional method for keeping that school in the community uh, and i think schools should be looking at it from that point of view as another way in which they can serve their communities so point five on your list was better insulation for schools and obviously Local authorities could be doing audits of the schools, but schools could get on and do these themselves. And especially if they've got volunteers who, you know, parent might be or know someone who could do this and give the school advice if they're not getting anything else. 
gosh, yeah, we've got a very large number of Victorian schools, uh, single glazed, and indeed the vast majority of British schools are still single glazed. So even supplementary double glazing would help, but there are lots of other things that schools can do. And again, I would encourage MATs, dioceses, local authorities to start putting plans together for getting rid of leaky buildings. Number six on your list was replacing gas cooking. Absolutely, it should be a given. All schools should now be looking at uh, how they cook their school lunches and if they're secondary schools or uh, primary schools teaching cooking, that they are not using gas cooking. Number seven on your list was replacing gas fired boilers in schools. Yeah, it's a tragedy that you know, we are still using wet systems in new schools. Yeah, number eight, the final key one on your list was a constant reminder to children or maybe an annual reminder, focus policy, eco-friendly journeys to schools. A lot of schools put a lot of energy into this and I think it's faded away with the COVID crisis and has got a bit forgotten and could do with another push right now. So if I was ahead, that would be something I was looking at going, oh yeah, I could do that in the next term. We could do an assembly on that. We could do the comms again. We need to encourage more safe walking routes uh, and more uh, ways in which children can come to school either on foot or on cycle or even parents getting together uh, if you if you live you know, within that three mile zone but you don't want the child to walk that distance uh, sharing car rides with others cuts car emissions so let's and do what walk, we can and walking buses as well and it needs rewards you know parents people oh, like to be rewarded for for good behavior we do it to children we should do it to parents as well uh, I mean, you know, every school can work out what, what it can do, but I think encouraging and rewarding good behaviour uh, will stop the, the lazy way of being a few minutes late and therefore having to jump in the car to get your child to school because you didn't plan early enough for them to walk to school. So a couple of extra things. If a school has a champion on this, they should be communi communicating with the children and the staff and it should be part of the conversation because it's not just about doing stuff, it's about educating the next generation so, there's a, so they're aware. And you had another suggestion which is more secondary school focused, John. I, I think we should be getting the children to do an audit where possible. Um, you know, I don't see why the, the top end of a primary school children, uh, many of them are savvy enough about this issue to be able to say to their school, here is a report that we as the pupils have produced, uh, which we think has ideas which we've got from uh, across the globe. There's a wonderful advert uh, running on television at present with children uh, challenging their elders about climate change. Challenge your school, ask it for a programme which they can help implement um you know where's the art department producing the um the good poster for your school um what's the design and technology department doing to help every department in the school has got something in a secondary school and every part of the curriculum in a primary school you know i'd like to see the music department um having some uh you know musical input by composing something for that school which relates to the climate change. This is across the whole of the curriculum. Let's go for it. Let's make British schools leaders in championing and doing something about climate change. So my final message to teachers, if you've seen this, please forward it to your head teacher. Head teachers, if you've seen this, please forward it to your governors, to your any chains that you're part of or your local authority to your local councillors put pressure on them say this is what we want support to do if anybody watching this video has got any suggestions please do put them in the comments on youtube or put them in the follow-up to this video anywhere else including in my facebook group which is expert primary maths teaching and they, can find, they, they can find my comments in uh, my blog at johnohausen.wordpress.com Okay, thank you so much for watching. Good luck with everything you're doing. Bye for now.